In this question, you're hauling a heavy cart up a slope of 30 degrees. Uh, you're pulling it with a force of 500 newtons uh, at an angle of 42 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Uh, the mass of the cart is 30 kilograms, and all of the dimensions of um, the wheels and the uh, center of gravity and the uh, lo load application zone um, are given. Uh, and you're asked to find the normal forces on the wheels, so wheel A and wheel B, um, along with the acceleration of the cart up the slope. So, looking at the diagram here, um, we're going to first draw in the forces and then we're going to draw a free body diagram. Uh, so, we're going to definitely have normal forces and the normal forces are perpendicular to the um, surface at the bottom. So this we're going to call NB and this we're going to call normal force at A. Then we're going to have a force due to gravity which points down um, FG. And again we have this force here F which is applied um, at that location over there. And then the last thing we have is to draw our kinetic, di kinetic diagram um, where we have an acceleration. Um, and this is going to be along the slope because we're assuming that the cart will not detach. Um, so it's just going to be along the slope direction. Uh, so since we drew all our forces, um, now we can draw in our coordinate system. And for simplicity, you always want to pick a coordinate system that um, reduces uh, the amount of calculations, especially when you're doing a moment balance. So in this case, um, this force here, this force here, and this force here are all perpendicular or parallel to the slope direction. Um, so we want to pick the coordinate system to be aligned with that so we don't have to take so many cosines and sines um, because we're three forces are just going to be perpendicular or parallel um, whereas two are going to need to involve cosine and sine and since we're given the angles for these much simpler um, to calculate uh, the components along the x and y direction um, for these two forces then um, for three um, and then acceleration is not a force but again acceleration will come in later into our force balance, so um, the, its direction matters. So we're going to pick our coordinate system to be along the slope, so uh, y will be up that way, x will be positive this way, so this is x, this is y, and we're going to assume a positive rotation uh, to be counterclockwise with respect to that x and y. Um, so again, let's draw our free body diagram. Um, so I remember with a free body diagram you have to detach uh, the um, body from um, the surfaces it's connected to. Inclined and we have mg which is equal to fg and if we draw this, this angle here is going to be 30 degrees. Then we have our force F here, which is slanted up at an angle. Um, and this angle here is going to be phi, um, whereas this here is equal to theta. Then we have the two wheel forces. And remember that um, this here is going to be 2NB. And this here is going to be a 2NA. And we have a 2 there because there's two wheels, one on the front, the one that we see, and one behind it. And since they're aligned, they're going to have the same force because they're in the same um, location. Um, but again, there's two of them. So whichever force you get, if you calculate it for one wheel, then you'd have to divide it by two to get the two wheels. Um, and then we have to draw in our acceleration, which we are assuming to be uh, again, acting at the center of gravity, um, AG, um, but we're assuming that the direction is going to be um, parallel to, or in the x direction, so parallel to the slope, and that is because we're assuming that this um, cart is not detaching from the ground, so it's not going to start to rotate. Um, so alpha is going to be zero, and the acceleration can only be along that because um, it's not going to lift off. Okay, so this is our full free body diagram. Let me draw in the coordinate system for reference one more time. So this is y, um, this is x, and this is a 
positive rotation. Okay, uh, and this is B, this is point A, this is point G, um, just for labeling sake. All right, let's uh, do our force balance. So we're going to start with our x force balance in the x direction, then in the y direction, and then we're going to do a moment balance, and that should give us enough equations to solve for the three unknowns. So the three unknowns are the acceleration, um, Na and Nb. Okay, so let's start with the sum of forces in the x direction. And this is going to be equal to um, the mass times the acceleration of g. Again, the full acceleration here because we're assuming the acceleration is only in the uh, negative x direction, so up the slope. Um, so let's do this force balance here. Uh, we have negative f cos phi uh, plus fg sine theta is equal to m a g. Okay. Uh, so in the x direction, we only have the two components from these forces. Um, these are only in, purely in the y direction, so they don't add up. They equal to ag. So in this case, we can actually solve for ag directly because we have f and we have fg and we have the angles. Um, so we can directly plug in numbers and solve for ag. So ag is equal to negative 500 newtons uh, cos of 42 degrees. Uh, plus 30 kilograms um, times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times sine of 30 degrees. And this is all divided by the mass, which is 30 kilograms. Um, and this yields Ag is equal to negative 7.48 meters per second squared. And so this is our first answer, acceleration at g. And just for a sanity check, we see that this is negative, which is expected because um, this block should be traveling up the slope. Um, so the sign is correct. All right, now let's do our sum of forces in the y direction. Sum of forces in y is equal to 0. And again, 0 here because there is no acceleration in the y direction. So this is nice and simple, f sine phi minus fg cos theta uh, plus 2nb plus 2naa is equal to 0. And we can see that in this equation we have both nb and na, so we can't directly solve. So we're going to have to get another equation and then solve the system of two equations, two unknowns. So next up we have our moment balance. So uh, for a moment balance, we have to pick a location about which we do our moment balance. So in this case here, um, if you want to simplify your life, you always want to take the moment um, at a location where you know the force or where you don't know the force, so wherever you have an unknown. Because if, for example, we take their sum of moments at A here, this force NA doesn't um, create a moment about A, right? Because it just crosses through. So then in our equation, we won't have this unknown. And our equation will be a function of all the other uh, unknowns, and in this case we know AG from our first equation, so we can directly solve for 2NB without solving a system of two equations, two unknowns. Um, so again, it's really important that you pick, you can pick any location to take the moment balance about which, but easier, usually you either take it at a location where you have an unknown, or at a location where you have many forces that are slanted at different angles, um, so you can cancel out those complex cross products and simplify it to just um, other unknowns. Okay, so really important to take a moment about the uh, correct location to simplify your life. So here we're going to take it about A. We could have done B, but um, I just picked A um, for simplicity. Uh, M A G times D. Now remember, when you're taking the moment about a location that is not the center of gravity, you are going to have this um, acceleration term. Okay, so this acceleration at the center of gravity will also create a moment about A. 
How about the point that we're taking? That is not the center of gravity. If this was the center of gravity, this distance here would be zero. So this is, again, the, dis the moment arm between the location A and um, um, the force, or the acceleration AG. Um, so this only applies if you are taking the moment about a point that is not the center of gravity. If I had taken the moment about, moment about the center of gravity, it would have still worked, but it wouldn't have had that term because D would have been zero. Anyways, um, back to doing our moment balance, we are going to um, take each force one by one and do a full moment balance about A. So let's start with FG. So negative FG uh, sine theta uh, times H. Uh, so this is going to be uh, FG here. Um, H is this distance here. Um, so we're taking this component here, so that's why we have uh, the sine, okay? So again, would be in this direction, this is the moment arm, this is H, um, and that's FG sine theta. And it's negative because it's twisting everything in the opposite direction as our positive direction. Next we have the other component of FG, plus FG uh, cos theta times dA. Okay, so this is the other components. So this is the um, vertical component, the y component of uh, FG. And so this distance here is uh, dA, and that's the moment arm, and this is the cosine of that force of FG, um, cosine of 30 degrees. Um, next up, we're going to move on to the other forces. Uh, so I'm going to go on a new line, uh, plus f cos of phi uh, times y. Um, so again, y is the distance. Um, so cos, f cos is this component over here. And y is that distance over there, Okay, which is different than this distance over here, which is h. Okay. Um, then we have the other component of F, which is negative uh, F sine phi uh, times um, the three distances. So we need this distance here now. Um, so it's going to be um, the distance of dA dB plus xB. So uh, dA plus dB plus xB. Uh, then we have uh, the normal force at B, uh, so we have minus 2 NB times um, dA plus dB. Again, the normal force at B acts uh, in this direction, so we need this moment arm here, which is simply dA plus dB. And then we're going to equate all of this uh, to MAY, or AG, which is in the y direction, um, times h, because again, h is this distance over here. And since ag acts in that direction over there, um, we need this moment arm, which is simply h. So now we have uh, an equation. Um, and this equation has one unknown, which is simply nb, because we know ag from uh, the previous equation there. We can simply plug everything in and solve for uh, NB, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do it over here. I'm just going to plug in the numbers. Uh, negative uh, 30 kilograms uh, times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times sine of 30 degrees uh, times 0 0.5 meters, which is H, um, plus 30 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times cos of 30 degrees um, times 0 0.3 meters, which is dA. Okay, new line, plus 500 newtons, which is F times cos of 42 degrees uh, times 0 0.4 meters. Uh, minus 500 newtons uh, times sine of 42 degrees 
times 0 0.6 meters. And again, the 0 0.6 is adding all of those distances up. Um, minus 2NB times 0 0.55 meters. And this 0 0.55 meters is dA plus dB. And this is going to be equal to um, 30 kilograms, which is the mass, times negative. Um, and here we're going to add our acceleration, 7.48 meters per second squared uh, times 0 0.5 meters, which again is h. Okay, now we plugged everything in, we can simplify, we can move all of this stuff um, to uh, the right hand side and divide by negative 2 and divide by 0 0.55 and solve for nb. Uh, so nb is going to be equal to um, 57.26 newtons. Okay, and then we have nb, so we can go back to our for sum of forces in the y direction. We can plug in nb, we know all of these unknowns, and we can simplify simply solve for na. And so when we do that, we get that uh, na is equal to 97.11 newtons. And so these are our final answers. Um, for the normal forces of the wheels. And remember, this is the normal force on each wheel. There's four wheels. So NB is the normal force on the front wheels, uh, and NA is on the back wheels. Okay?